Whether you are running the A-B test on a low or high traffic site, as we discussed before, your sample size should be big enough to ensure that the experiment reaches the level of statistical significance and statistical power that you are looking for. In this tutorial, we will learn how to calculate sample size and test duration needed to run an A-B test successfully. Now, given that most companies use tools to run A-B test, it is highly unlikely that you will be required to do the calculation manually or from scratch. And that's for a good reason, because if you were to do this by hand, you will have to use this formula here, which let's be honest, is not very easy or intuitive. The A-B testing platform your company uses whether it's a third-party tool or in-house platform, will help you calculate sample sizes really easily. There are also a number of online sample size calculators that you can use. In the rare case that you are required to code it, there are packages or libraries in Python or R that you can easily use uh, for this. We will see how to code sample size calculation in section four. So let's learn how sample size can be calculated using a sample size calculator, because this is most likely what you will be doing in real life. This is a screenshot from a popular online calculator. I have provided the link in the course notes, uh, so you can go there and play around with it. Let's do a quick demo here. For us to get to the sample size, first there are some inputs that we need. We need the baseline conversion, which is the existing conversion of your control or variation A before changes are made. Minimum detectable difference or MDE, which is the smallest change in conversion rate that you're interested in detecting. Statistical power, which as we know is the probability that the test correctly rejects the null hypothesis. Or in other words, the percentage of time the minimum effect will be detected if it exists. And statistical significance, which is the probability of rejecting a null hypothesis when it's true. Or in other words, it's the percentage of time a difference will be detected, assuming one does not exist. So let's assume our baseline rate is 20% and our MDE is 5%. You can choose absolute or relative. We are choosing uh, absolute uh, minimum detectable effect of 5% here. We are looking for a statistical power of 80%, and let's say the significance level that we are looking for is 5%. So given these inputs, before we get into the sample size, let's think about what the MDE of 5% means. So the MDE of 5% basically means that if the conversion is lower than 15% or higher than 25%, then we want to be able to detect it 80% of the time with a probability of making a type 1 error 5% time. Given these inputs, the calculator throws out the sample size required per variation. In this case, it's a minimum of 1,030 data points per variation. So that's how sample size calculation works. At the end of the day, we don't want to simply use the calculator without understanding the core concepts. Since we've covered the statistical concepts in detail in section two, I hope the intuition behind how the sample size calculation works is clear. Now, let's look at another scenario in which you want to approach the A-B test in a different way. So you are constrained for time and you can only run the test for a certain specific duration, say one week. You can see if it will be worthwhile to do the test based on your expectation of improvement by calculating the MDE that you can reliably detect for different durations. For example, let's look at this table here. It shows that if I were to run the experiment for one week, the minimum effect I will be able to reliably detect is 25.54%. That means if the test shows an improvement of lower than this number, 
I will not be able to reliably detect it if I run the test for only one week. So if I do expect my test to improve the conversion rate by 25.5% or more, then I should go ahead and run it. However, if I expect the improvement might be around say 15%, then I may want to negotiate to be able to run the test for a longer duration, at least three weeks in this case. Because in this table, if we, if we look at uh, number of weeks against the minimum detectable effect, this is where we will be able to reliably detect an improvement of 15%. There is another consideration that comes into the picture when thinking of test duration. Every website or app has a business cycle. That is the time it takes for customers to convert. For example, it is possible for certain websites to have the number of conversions to be relatively low throughout the weekend, but then uh, it peaks on weekdays. So if you run a test on Saturday and Sunday, the results are bound to be different from the results you get from running the test on Monday and Tuesday. To get valid test data, you should run your test throughout the business cycle so that the data accounts for such potential fluctuations. In the next tutorial, we will go through such factors that we should account for when considering the duration of the test. This was all for this tutorial. See you in the next one soon.